So welcome back to the Python plus node tutorial series. In the last episode, we created uh, utility functions that help us send and receive data between node and Python. And this episode, we'll be creating the data service, which will handle the input queue and also the output. And it, this is something where you can start actually applying vertical scaling if you want. So depending upon how, how much the queue is full, you can have thresholds to start multiple shells and direct input to these different shells or manage these shells and that way you can actually increase the performance by a lot because all these processes will run on single threads so you can if you have a good system you can have multiple python shells running and if you are deploying it in a cloud environment you will have a lot of cores so you can actually vertically vertically scale your system without scaling the server so and since this Python node server that I'm building will be available on GitHub. So you can actually use it as an independent unit in your microservice architecture to have like vertical scaling on the server and you can horizontally scale to spawn multiple such servers with those scripts. So you can have a master server that will control these Python servers, which will basically do Python processing. So that way you can deploy your ML model at scale and get really good performance also. So just to get started with the basic data service, I'll basically use this app service only and I'll rename it. Um, we'll call it data service. And we'll just save because everything will be renamed. Let's just close the shell. So in the app gateway, we'll be using the data service. So we'll just name this data and since vs code take care of rename and everything the module should also have it as renamed and we'll just rename the file also right and call it data service okay so we don't need this method we'll just get rid of it and to get my data service started the first thing we'll do is as always create the logger so we need the private read-only logger which is equal to a new logger and we'll give it data service dot name and we need the timestamps okay so once the logger is created we'll create the queue which will basically be an array only but we will use it in a fashion as if it was a queue so it will be an any array and we will have some flags so as i said in the last episode we'll be creating a utility function for in the python side to have uh, the uh, ready flag so we'll just call create a ready flag and at the start we will keep it as false and the next thing we'll create an output subject okay now this may not be the correct usage of subject from rxjs but gets the work done and sometimes like using observe like creating observables from bare bones is too much problematic so i just use subjects to make it easy so this will be the output stream where we will because uh, when we emit from the back uh, the python side we will be emitting the ready events also and the process data also but the output subject will only have the process data so we will do kind of a filtering here depending upon what has been emitted so before we go ahead let's just add that ready function so if i go here so to make it we just need a new function definition ready so what this will do is just emit some data so we will use uh, reuse the emit function that we had already created and we will then emit a dictionary so status now it could be anything you can just emit a number also if you want but i just like to be a more specific about it so once we uh, so every time at the end of each iteration we will call this function to make sure that uh, the Python the data service knows that it can push more data in through the queue so in the constructor the only thing we'll need is we'll need to inject the Python shell because this will be work 
working on top of the python shell so we'll do a private python and we'll just call it the python service that we had created earlier and what we will do is get the this dot python dot response so we'll take that observable and subscribe to it okay so any data coming from it so if the data has the status equal equal uh, ready uh, we should actually do triple equals here was javascript then we can do this dot ready flag equal to true okay and we will call uh, a method that will just send the data so you will just define this method here private return void okay and so i opened long the wrong brackets <laughs> so now what we need to do is if it's ready so we'll first check if there is actually something in the queue so this dot q dot length no. length should not be equal to zero if that's the case then we can say this dot ready is false because we are going to input something to the processing pipeline okay and this dot python dot process so that is the utility function that we created on the python service to send in the data so we call this dot q dot shift so the shift function will basically input the like this will be a fifo queue first in first out so whatever would be at the index zero that would be inputted here and the rest of the array will be shifted one place ahead so that's how the queue will work and we'll just make it double equal to in the javascript way and else so if it is not a status message then it would be an output message that that is the data we have processed so what we do with this is we just send it to the output subject so this dot output dot next so we just send this data on the output stream okay and we will create a public getter for output public get output it will return an observable of type any and we'll just return since subject is something that's been derived from an observable we can just return it directly okay so we now have the processing phase and the, an observable stream that will contain just the processed data now the main thing that's needed is to populate the queue that is the input method so we'll have another public method called input and it will take an input data which will be any and what will this do is this dot q dot push input okay and if uh, the shell is ready okay we will start the processing loop now this is like this is very important because there may be times when like data can come in a bursty traffic so the shell may actually finish the processing and just halt for some while because there is no more data being inputted so this way as soon as more data comes we will start the processing again and the way the shell waits is so we know whenever we call the node.receive function the input function is called now input function will wait on the standard input stream till it gets any input so we don't need to do anything on our own to hold that while loop to wait for input uh, that will be handled using this input function only so this way we have basically completed our data service all we need to do is actually implement our uh, the while loop okay so the way we are going to do is we can still have this as it is but we'll just remove this the first thing we will do is before the while loop starts we will call 
node dot ready okay because we need the first input to come then we'll go and while loop and we'll just say it's true so it will run indefinitely and we'll create an output dictionary okay so this will be an empty dictionary what we'll do is data equal to node dot receive okay we receive the data we will log it so i just copy no, first we'll actually multiply it so output uh, an answer key in output will be data dot data dot a star data b okay and we'll just add a log statement to actually make it easy okay then we will emit the output and we'll call it the ready function now you can see these utility functions really make it helpful and concise way to write our code so now that our main loop is ready we just need to connect the data service with the websocket gateway and that's it so we can actually remove this okay we will be using the data service and we can I'll just look at my gateway definition yeah so we don't need this subscription what we'll do is data uh, this dot data service dot output so we'll subscribe to that dot subscribe and we'll take the output and we'll just emit it on the server like we'll use this dot server dot emit and we'll use the output channel and emit the output so this way any output that will be coming from the data service will be directly sent to the uh, like the front end and this is where we were receiving the data so I'll just comment this and rather than emitting here we'll use this dot data service dot input okay and whatever that data is coming we'll just input here and just delete it so that's it everything is now connected so if we start the front end and the back end both we'll just split the terminal and npm start front end and npm start back end so if everything has been implemented correctly we will start seeing numbers that are being generated on the front end send over through the band nestjs back end through web sockets then uh, okay we actually have an error length is undefined oh yeah I made a stop there. Length is actually a method. No. What did I do wrong here? I didn't initialize the queue. Oh, sorry. Sometimes you make mistakes. Again, I'll just save this and yeah so our service has been started it's actually process the two and three also that we input in the python shell so we'll just comment this also we don't need that to be sent to the back end the shell has been started so now if we open localhost so we didn't get the connection message the client has been connected now if you press start so you can see uh, python has started processing data and we are getting the data sent back to the front end so now this may not be the like the most awesome example of this architecture but this architecture is really really extensible you can have your whole m like you can input a big json that could be the input of your whole ml model and you can do the ml like and in the startup steps you can do all the configuration for the ml model then you can do the processing in the while loop and you can then output the prediction from your ml model and send and you can use the web sockets to make it real time and it makes it will make really easy to deploy your ml models on a node server 
so that way you can have a great backend also because nest.js provides you lot of modules you have data inbuilt database integrations you have inbuilt graphql support and a proper server side framework with mvc patterns also enabled so also the main thing that i like about this architecture is a great separation of concerns so python is now solely responsible for data processing and doing your ml and data science stuff because that is what it was made for and your node server is solely responsible for doing the server side and backend side uh, processing so i hope you like this video so please do leave a like and if you have any suggestions for any further series leave, leave them down in the comments and to be updated on the channel please do subscribe thank you it actually stops also